We're very fortunate to have uh, um, a senior official from the department, Henrietta Four, um, who is the uh, first female administrator of AID and is the director of U.S. Foreign Assistance. Uh, she's involved in many of the issues. Uh, I asked her uh, um, whether she's going to miss uh, uh, government, and she said, well, it's kind of a 24-hour-a-day deal. We get phone calls about Somalia in the middle of the night, and we get all of this. So. Uh, she was nice enough to get up and come over here this morning, having been up all night on a number of other crises. Um, uh, Henrietta is, is a woman who has brought real skill uh, to government, um, and she has uh, made government work. Um, uh, she has played a key role at the State Department. Uh, she was previously Undersecretary for Management. But I always thought the most interesting job uh, was Director of the Mint. Um, a position she held uh, a number of years ago. Anyway, I'd like to welcome her and thank her for coming. Uh, and again, I want to thank uh, Dick and the staff for really putting together a tremendous program today. Henrietta. Good morning, everyone, and uh, I also will add in my uh, thanks and congratulations to both Robin West and uh, to Dick Solomon for the United States Institute for Peace to host this today. Um, I think it's very important that we do so and that we think about these subjects. I carry Secretary Rice's greetings and her regrets for not being with you today. She was scheduled to speak, and as Robin mentioned, uh, she has been delayed in New York. She has been working around the clock to end the violence in Gaza. She appreciates the outstanding work of the Institute and your foresight in putting together what will no doubt be a fascinating as well as a timely discussion as we transition to the new administration. I will begin with a few thoughts uh, from the Secretary and then add a few of my own. The Institute of Peace was founded in 1984 during the last great ideological struggle of the 20th century, the struggle against Soviet communism. It was a struggle that was eventually won by freedom because of peace through strength and because of the help of the Institute of Peace. We are in a different struggle today, an ideological struggle against violent extremism and forces against freedom and justice. Forces that reminded us all on September 11, 2001, that a safer, more peaceful, and prosperous world of which we all dream requires the leadership of the United States and strong partnership of our friends and allies. At the center of this work has been the Middle East. In the last eight years, this administration has put the country on the course where we have built a different foundation for a different kind of Middle East. The United States is, of course, deeply concerned about the situation in Gaza. The humanitarian situation is clearly worsening. The ongoing attacks against Israel and the decision that Hamas made not to respect the previous period of calm shows us that when this ends, there must be new arrangements in place, not a return to status quo. It is imperative that any ceasefire is durable and sustainable, and that it ensures the safety and security of Israelis and Palestinians alike. Many challenges remain between the Israelis and Palestinians, but we all are hopeful that through the framework put in place, the Annapolis process, Palestinians and Israelis will one day reach an agreement for lasting peace. Today, because of Saddam Hussein's Iraq is gone, there is truly a chance for a better future for the Middle East. For the first time in history, Iraq has a democratically elected prime minister, and it is a multi-ethnic democracy and a friend of the United States rather than an Iraq that is invading its neighbors and using its weapons of mass destruction. And in Lebanon, Syrian forces are gone because of the policies of this administration. Beyond the Middle East, democracy is on the rise. In Afghanistan, after years of living under the oppressive Taliban, we now have a democratically elected government. Indeed, throughout United States foreign policy, we have seen significant achievements. With North Korea, we have made progress towards denuclearization within a context of the six parties, 
Step by step, we've been going through the North's commitments, and when the North has gone forward with its obligations, the United States has responded. Across the developing world, the United States enjoys strong working relationships, particularly with China, India, Brazil, Colombia, and Chile, which brings us to development. With these diplomatic achievements under Secretary's leadership, we have also made important gains in rebuilding our development capacity. As Director of the United States Foreign Assistance and as the Administrator of the United States Agency for International Development, the Secretary and I have worked closely to implementing her transformational diplomacy agenda to build and sustain democratic, well-governed states that will respond to the needs of their people. President Bush recently stated at the White House Summit on International Development held in October, and I quote, America is committed, and America must stay committed, to international development for reasons that remain true regardless of the ebb and flow of the markets. We believe that development is in America's security interests. We believe that we ought to remain committed to development because it is in our long-term economic interests. And we are committed to development because it is in our moral interests." End quote. We have all been a witness to, and it has been a distinct honor to be a part of, the most ambitious development agenda since the Marshall Plan. In overall financial terms, since 2001, the United States has nearly tripled its foreign assistance worldwide. And in Africa, we are on track to quadruple this assistance. In Latin America, overall levels have doubled. We are the largest bilateral donor of official humanitarian and food aid in the world. We were among the first to respond to the victims of the Indian Ocean tsunami in 2004, the South Asian earthquake in 2005, the cyclones in Bangladesh and Burma and hurricanes in the Caribbean. Where there is a disaster, we respond quickly and effectively. We also are dedicated to building a lasting peace in war-torn countries like Liberia, where, since the end of the Civil War, we have provided over 900 million U.S. dollars in direct bilateral support. Where there is disease, the United States has provided hope to the ailing. In 2003, the administration launched the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, or PEPFAR. This program is the largest commitment by a single country in human history to combat a single disease. Where there is opportunity, the United States has sought partnership. One of my top priorities has been to achieve greater development impact to attract resources and technology and expertise of the private sector. In the past year, USAID has created over 225 new partnerships, leveraging more than $650 million in private sector contributions. When the global financial crisis threatened foreign assistance, President Bush announced that the United States would keep its development pledges and its commitment to the developing world. We were the first country to make that clear. This administration has also strengthened accountability in foreign assistance, working to ensure that aid produces results, fosters economic growth, and promotes good governance. The creation of the Millennium Challenge Corporation and the launch of foreign aid reform are two clear examples. By supporting effective development, the United States strengthens our allies, builds capable partners, and preempts or mitigates conflicts. We have reached a tipping point where the importance of development and the need to build capacity of civilian agencies is well understood throughout the government. This is why this administration explicitly elevated development, making it integral to the United States foreign policy alongside defense and diplomacy, the three Ds of national security. To build this capacity, USAID, we recently launched the Development Leadership Initiative. Our goal is to double the number of United States Agency for International Development Foreign Service Officers in the next three years, and I hope we will double it again within the next few years. This initiative will enable USAID to better advance development goals on the ground and to work more closely and effectively with our country partners. Improving American foreign assistance has never been more important to our national security as it is today. This has been a transformational period of rethinking and revitalizing our approaches to foreign assistance. 
As we pass the baton, we are passing on a few of our lessons learned. One, planning and integrating our defense, diplomacy, and development efforts are key to our security as a nation, and our commitment to doing so must remain strong. Two, it is important that we continue to invest in a safer and more secure future by keeping our commitment on development, particularly in the midst of a global economic slowdown. Three, we must continue to keep our commitments to rebuilding the diplomatic and development staff throughout the world, increasing our presence as well as our deepening our expertise in languages. And fourth, as we pass the baton, continue to focus on public and private interests and partnerships with all types of private sector partners, U.S. and multinational companies, foundations, universities, and think tanks. This is the strongest trend for our shared future, and in it lies the seeds for a safer, more peaceful, and prosperous world. I would like to end here with the best wishes from Secretary Rice and myself from the diplomatic and development institutions for the United States. We want to thank the United States Institute of Peace and its remarkable president, Dick Solomon. And I look forward to continuing the discussion later today on the Economic Development and State Building Panel. Thank you very much. This uh, baton is uh, in part a way of saying thanks, but when you carry it back to your office, you undoubtedly are going to meet your successor, and you might hand the baton to the successor and say, lots of luck, or whatever. <laughs> Thank Thanks you, very Jim. much. Thank you. Thank you.